Tired of writing the same code over and over again for every new Flutter project? I have created the ultimate starter template that includes everything you need to launch your app faster. By the end of this video, you will have a fully functional boilerplate with authentication, saming, localization and a clean architecture ready to go. Let me show you what's inside. This boilerplate includes Google authentication through Firebase, automatic user storage in Firestore, multi-language support, dark and light themes, Navigation with GoRotor and it's all built on clean architecture with block or state management. Let's start with the folder structure and then I will show you exactly how to set this up for your own projects. First, let's look at the core folder, specifically the same setup. I am using two separate files here. One defines all my colors and the other configures widget themes for both light and dark modes. The beauty of this approach is that you can customize any color you want. Just change the values here and your Intel app updates instantly. You can also fine-tune widgets, properties like button styles, text fields and app bars. Now here's where it gets interesting. The same switching functionality lives in its own feature folder. In the domain layer I have an enum that defines the available themes, light, dark and system. This is an abstract repository with methods to get the current theme and change it. This is implemented in the data layer and it's simple. The selected theme is saved to shared preferences so it persists between app sessions. The theme block manages everything. I use a single state class that I modify with a copy with method. This keeps things clean and predictable. The block implementation is straightforward, following standard patterns. Moving on to routing. In the core folder, I have configured Go Router with all the necessary routes. This handles navigation throughout the app, including authentication guards. I also have an abstract failure class here that all error types inherit from. This gives us consistent error handling across the entire application. And of course, we have dependency injection set up with GetIt. All your repositories, data source and blocks are registered here. This makes testing easier and keeps your code loosely coupled. Now let's talk about localization. The main language is English and for each additional language I create a new ARB file where I translate all the text strings. The Dart files are generated automatically. Just run the command flutter gen l10n and flutters create all the necessary localizations files for you. For language switching I wrote a simple qubit that stores the current local as its state. When users change languages the qubit updates and the entire app rebuilds with the new translations. Here the cool part. Every text string in the app uses these generated localization classes, so adding a new language is as simple as creating a new IRB file and regenerating. Now we get the features folder. I've included a home feature that demonstrates the theming and localization in action. It's intentionally simple because every app has different design requirements. You can use this as a starting point and build your own UI on top. Let me show you how authentication works because this is probably the most important part. First we have a user entity that stores the Firebase ID, email, name and avatar URL. The repository interface declares methods for login, getting the current user and logout. Notice I'm using the Isaac class from the Darts package. This gives us functional error handling where the left side is an error and the right side is success. The actual implementation lives in the data source. This is where we interact with Firebase authentication and Firestore. When a user logs in with Google, we authenticate them through Firebase, then save their information to Firestore. The authentication block manages the entire authentication flow. Like the theme block, it uses a single state with a copy list for immutability. Here are the events for the block handles. Check authentication status, login and logout. So how does everything connect? Let's trace through the app startup. In main Dart file, when the app launches, we immediately dispatch an event to check if there is an authenticated user. This happens before any UI is displayed. The first screen in our router is a splash screen. This splash screen contains a block listener that watches our authentication state. Based on the status, it navigates either to the home page if you are logged in or to the authentication page if you are not. This creates a smooth user experience where returning users go straight to the app while new users see the login screen. Now let's set up Firebase for your project. First, create a new project in Firebase console. This takes about 30 seconds. Next, enable Google Authentication in the Authentication section. Just flip the switch and add your support email. Then enable Firestore database.
start in test mode for development but remember to add security rules before you go to production. Now we need to add Firebase to our Flutter app. Follow the official Firebase instructions, which typically involve using the command line. You might need to install Node.js if you don't have already. Run npm install Jiu Firebase tools, then Firebase login, and finally Flutter file configure. This command automatically generates all the configuration files you need. There's one more step for Google authentication to work on iOS. Go to your Firebase console and download the Google service info list file. We need a couple of values from here. Open the file and find the client ID. Copy this value. Now go to your iOS folder in the Flutter project and open the info list file. I have added comments showing exactly where to pass this value. Next, find the reversed client ID in the same Google service info file. Copy it and paste it in the second location I have marked in the info list. That's it for iOS configuration. For Android, we need to generate SHA case. This proves to Firebase that your app is legitimate. Open your terminal and run the ktool command. I'll leave the exact comments in the description below. You need to generate both a SHA1 and SHA256K. Once you have both keys, add them in the Firebase console under your Android app settings. This is important. After adding the keys, download the Google Services JSON file again and replace the one in your project. Firebase updates this file with the key information. Now you're ready to run your project. Execute Flutter pubget to install all dependencies, then run Flutter gen L10n to generate localization files. Launch the app on your device or simulator. You should see the splash screen, then the login page. Tap sign in with Google and you are authenticated. Your user data is now stored in Firestore. Try switching themes. It works instantly and persists when you restart the application. Change the language and all the text updates immediately. And here's how you can customize this for your needs. Want to add a new language? Create a new ARB file, translate your strings and regenerate. That's it. Want to add a new feature? Follow the same folder structure, create a feature folder, a domain, data and presentation layers. The clean architecture structures make it easy to test, maintain and scale your application. This boilerplate eliminates hours of setup time for every new project. You get authentication, saving, localization, navigation and clean architecture out of the box. The link to the GitHub repository is in the description. Start it if you find it useful and feel free to contribute improvements. If you have questions about any part of the setup, drop them in the comments. And if you want to see more Flutter content like this, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and happy coding!